And so our first speaker is uh, Lee Markert. Rick Talyu with the Alberta Canola Producers Commission is up in New Norway and he couldn't uh, make it down on the road, so Lee, Lee volunteered or was voluntold to come, so thanks very much, Lee. Um, he's serving his second and final term as a director for Reason, Region 9 with the ACPC. He is a uh, vice chair and current chair of the Governance and Finance Committee, so I guess I'll take it from here, Lee. Uh, thanks, Autumn, for the introduction. Uh, as she mentioned, obviously, I know a lot of you are probably expecting to see Rick here, and if you know Rick, you're probably excited to see Rick here, but uh, as is the case for many people participating today, he couldn't be here because of the weather, so you get me instead. So as Autumn mentioned, I'm the, uh, the director for Region 9, that's the southwestern uh, corner of the province here, um, farm up near Vulcan with my family. And uh, as Autumn mentioned, I'm serving my second and, and final term on the ACPC board as your vice chair. So um, I guess we'll just dive right in here. So in terms of some of the organizations and some of the structures you might hear as it pertains to the canola industry in Western Canada, um, there's the provincial grower organization, so that's us, that's ACPC. Um, uh, we, we're funded by, by the growers and, uh, and uh, levy collected at the farm uh, gate. There's the CCGA, or the, canola growers, the Canadian Canola Growers Association, and so that's a national organization that's made up of growers from across Western Canada and Ontario, and uh, spend a lot of their time focusing on policy at a national level. And then there's uh, the Canola Council of Canada, which is actually uh, made up of, of all the stakeholders in the canola industry in Canada, uh, growers, trade, crushers, and exporters all sit around the same board table. And we're very fortunate. Uh, we've got three members of uh, the ACPC board sit on the CCGA. And, uh, and actually the chair of that organization is Todd Hames. He's a director uh, from up by Mar Wayne. And as a result, he sits on the CC board as well with our chair, Colin Felstad. So you're very well represented at a national level as far as canola goes. So our mission statement at ACPC is, uh, is to increase the long-term profitability of Alberta canola growers. Everything we do has to come back to this. And, um, and I think we do a pretty good job of that. In terms of the, how, we're, how we're structured, um, the farmers who, I was going to ask uh, how many people in the crowd this morning are, are producers in general? How many of you are from Alberta? And how many of you produce canola? So I'm, you know, pretty happy with that number given the situation. So uh, those farmers in the, in the area that do pay check off uh, elect the directors, such as myself. Uh, we make up the board of directors and set the goals and the policy of the organization. And then we disseminate down to the staff uh, to, to carry out and manage operations and achieve those goals. So we have one staff person, that's uh, our general manager, Ward Toma, and then he, he hires people like Rick and Simone Demir Collins, if you're familiar with her. Carla Bergstrom uh, to kind of carry out the goals uh, of the policy that we set forward. So here's a picture of the board of directors taken at last year's AGM in, uh, in Edmonton. Okay, so re we're made up of uh, 12 regions here in Alberta. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I'm the chair, or I'm the director from Region 9, southwest corner of the province. We haven't historically been a high-producing high canola area, but we're definitely gaining, uh, gaining momentum as we go forward, uh, especially over the last couple of years. So in terms of Canadian canola production, um, historically speaking, the bulk of it's produced in Saskatchewan, but Alberta uh, rivals to be a close second. And then in terms of canola yield, we kind of set the benchmark uh, in terms of average yield and outpacing the other prairie provinces in Canada. And then as I kind of alluded to before, uh, in terms of where canola is produced in Alberta, the majority of it is produced in, in that central Alberta uh, and, and north central part of the province. However, the Peace River, given the number of acres they have to cultivate, produce a, a high amount. And then in southern Alberta, of course, we're, as I mentioned, we're gaining some steam. So our year end was uh, July 31st and uh, audited financial statements were included in the annual report that was mailed out to you guys. You should have all received a copy of this in the mail. If you, if you didn't or if you misplaced it, um, it's available on the ACPC website. We meant to have copies for you here today obviously with uh, uh, Rick, but you know, being as he couldn't be with us, he, uh, they're not going to be here. So if you do want to check that out, uh, by all means go to the ACPC website. So in terms of our financial position uh, at the end 
end of last year. We're sitting just shy of $9 million in assets to liabilities, uh, under half a million in, in current cur total current liabilities, so that's kind of bills that have been rolled over into the next fiscal. Unappropriated members' equity, about $1.3 million, so that's cash that uh, hasn't been uh, allocated to any one project or any one area. And... Um, that has a lot to do with the fact of we've run, uh, been successful in running surpluses in, the, in in several of the last few of the last few years here. So, um, equity and capital assets, 138,000. Future commit, co excuse me, future commitments reserve of uh, just under 2.5 million. And what that is is, when a researcher comes to us, uh, like Farming Smarter is one of our partners, for example, they typically ask for funding over the course of three to five years or that sort of thing. And so, uh, in order to make sure those projects are fully funded throughout, ACPC will set aside money over over the next three or five years or whatever the duration of the project is to make sure it does get funded in the event something happens to, to the organization. So, so about two and a half million dollars allocated to future, uh, future research projects. And then internally restricted reserves, which we'll touch on next. Uh, we, we carry a shutdown fund of about $300,000 in case we have to uh, shut down the organization. Crop failure contingency reserve of about a million dollars, and um, that's held in the, in the event that we have a drought or some major crop failure and, and uh, our revenue stream drops off, but we still need to maintain the operations of the organization uh, until the, the following crop can come off. And then future research contingency reserve of, of over $3 million. That was uh, a one-time unappropriated member's equity that, um, that we kind of allocated for market development. And uh, it's actually still been, it's been sitting there for a couple of years, but um, some of that has to do with uh, the Growing Forward and the Growing Forward 2 programs, um, which I'll, I'll touch on a little bit more here uh, later on. So in terms of our audited revenue at the end of 12, 13, uh, came in at uh, about $5.3 million. Uh, obviously the majority of that comes from checkoffs uh, and the levy. Um, re re uh, refunded just under, or just over 300,000. And then actually that's a pretty substantial number in terms of, of interest uh, fees and grants and, and some of that had to do with uh, a federal grant uh, from, from the government of Alberta to produce the Chase Duffy books. And, and uh, if you're not, not aware of those, I'll, I'll, that's another thing I'll touch on later in the presentation here. So in terms of where we spend your money, obviously the majority of it goes back into research, CCC, market development, and uh, grower extensions. Uh, so last year we, we actually were quite happy to run a deficit of about $115,000. And the reason we're happy with that is kind of comes back to that $1.3 million that we hold in uh, unreserved equity. And you guys aren't contributing money, uh, myself included, aren't contributing money to this organization to have it sort of sit and collect dust. And so with that $1.3 million sitting there, we're, uh, with, by running a, a deficit, we're actually able to whittle that down and put that money into projects and uh, extension back to you guys as opposed to have it just sort of sitting there collecting dust. So here's kind of a visual breakdown of how things uh, shook out last year. Like I say, most of it goes into CCC, research, market development, and grower relations. Um, about 85% of the money we collect goes back into uh, back into the, the province and, and Western Canada and, and uh, programs to make uh, canola production more efficient and, and uh, provide better management to the grower. So about 15% of what's left over is what's used to run the organization. So to kind of break down those chunks of the pie individually, uh, the Canola Council of Canada um, receives a good chunk of that, of, of our annual revenue. Um, probably the most apparent result of that funding uh, that you guys see on the ground level would be the crop production team or the area agronomists. So we're very fortunate to have four agronomists in Alberta, um, including Autumn Barnes, who's uh, our agronom or the CCC agronomist here in Southern Alberta. So uh, Autumn's been with us, or been with CCC for seven months, and she's doing a heck of a job. So. Um, like I say, we're, we're kind of in a unique position here in Alberta, have four agronomists and, and really four excellent agronomists and just a wealth of knowledge and an excel excellent extension tool when it comes to, to uh, disseminating some of that information back down to the grower level. Uh, Canola Digest is a uh, production that's put out a couple times a year. Um, kind of keeps, uh, keeps growers up to date on the happenings of, of the council and uh, as it pertains to production and market development. And Canola Watch, which is a year-round uh, newsletter, I guess, 
but uh, it really ramps up in season and it comes out on a weekly basis and kind of updates you on, on you know, insects, uh, production risks, um, kind of how, how the crop's progressing across Western Canada. And if you're not already signed up for it, I strongly urge you to go to uh, the, the Canola Council website or the ACPC website and sign up for it. And then probably the biggest uh, thing this, the council does is provides market development in both domestic markets and, and uh, uh, market access um, through exports and, and uh, foreign, foreign market development. So. In terms of agronomic research, that's another big chunk of the pie, somewhere between 25 and 27 percent. And um, in terms of the, the sum of commitments that we have on the books right now is about 3.3 million. And uh, the majority of that being in agronomic research, um, there's, kinda, there's, there's not as many projects available anymore to fund when it comes to germplasm research, but uh, um, two and a half million dollars to, to basically find ways to grow canola better. Something that kind of dovetails from the, uh, the research end of things is the CPT trials or the canola performance trials. And that's uh, third party, un unbiased um, um, trials of canola varieties, cross spectrum, uh, Roundup Ready Tolerant, Liberty Link, uh, Clearfield, and uh, basically any, any variety that, that uh, is out there can be registered in the, in the CPT trials. And uh, all the data is collected and distributed both in print and online. And I was actually playing around on, on the CPT uh, website last week. And uh, I'm really impressed with how well it works and how much information is really there. And you can, you can uh, compare varieties over a number of different years as well as uh, information from this year, which was kind of a concern when we went into it in the first place because uh, with the tight timeline now with the way canola seed sales work of getting the, the former crop off and then making plans for the next crop, we wanted to, to try and fit in that, that uh, window of getting information back um, so we could have informed decisions this year and, it, and it's actually worked out quite well for the past couple of years. So if you're interested, please check out canolaperformancetrials.ca, I strongly urge you to, uh, or just Google canola performance trials. Um, so the Growing Forward to Science Cluster, so this is a $25 million fund um, contributed to by the federal government and by industry. And it's just an excellent, excellent example of how collaboration in industry uh, and with government can, can really leverage your, your levy dollar and get a lot of research done. And so um, kind of going back to that $3 million that I talked about that was kind of being held uh, in reserve for, for market development, we kind of wanted to wait to invest that money until we found out what, uh, what Growing Forward 2 was going to do. And as it turned out, uh, GF2 wants to focus more on uh, agronomic research. And so that gives ACPC kind of an opportunity to step in and fund some, uh, some market, development and, uh, market development research. So, so a uh, nice segue into market development. Obviously, uh, with any market development, you focus on maintaining existing markets, building new markets, and then exp and in our case, expanding awareness uh, just to general of agriculture and canola. So our uh, market development coordinator, Simone Demirs Collins, does an excellent job of this. She tar targets three prime uh, target audiences, consumers, students, and uh, health and, f and food service. So um, we get to consumers by through things like the Calgary Stampede and the Royal Winter Fair, um, getting in with students and teachers right at the educational level so they have an awareness of canola and agriculture from a very young age. And then health, health and food service. So. Um, dietitians and chefs and, and uh, people in the restaurant industry. Uh, so here, here's that $3 million again that I talked about in terms of market development research, and that's a pretty substantial investment relative to, to some of the investment uh, that's done in Western Canada, especially when it comes from a provincial level. So take pride in the fact that as uh, Alberta producers, you're really spearheading some of this market development research. And, and one of the things we're looking at very closely is this anti-cancer canola study out of the U of A. and um, there's a good chance that it'll, it'll uh, that $3 million will, will contribute in full to that anti-cancer canola study. So um, we're very excited with, with, uh, with some of the developments coming forward in that area. And as I alluded to before, the Chase Duffy, Duffy Adventures are kind of a fun, interactive way for kids and, and teachers to get involved or to, to build awareness about agriculture and canola in specific. And uh, I think they're on to their fourth book by now, and um, they've, they've been very well received at the, at the school level. 
So grower relations and extension, obviously this is Rick's uh, area and uh, he's very passionate about it and as a result he's very good at it. So he's come up with lots of different ways, uh, lots of different avenues to, to disseminate this information back to the grower, be it uh, agronomic information or market decisions or, or marketing information or, or just management uh, decision making in general. So. A um, lot, of, lot of different extension activities he partakes in. Obviously, Rick works very closely with the CCC agronomists and uh, has, uh, has a very good working relationship with them. Hosts and sponsor conferences uh, such as this one um, and meetings and workshops, crop walks across the province uh, all throughout the year. Uh, weekly radio and podcasts, uh, grain pricing information, which is kind of the highlight of our ACPC website. Uh, growing with canola extension through the ARAs and of course the farm tech conference and I I would say if you're going to attend one conference all year other than farming smarter of course farming smarter is is uh, just a given but if you're going to attend one other conference for the money nothing beats farm farm tech and uh, it's held in Edmonton at the end of January and uh, that's actually where we hold our AGM and and a lot of the grower groups hold their AGMs and it's not only an opportunity to uh, gain a lot of information on the industry and what's new and cutting edge but it's also an excellent opportunity to network with like-minded producers from across the province, across Western Canada, and, uh, and industry from across uh, Canada as well. So a good example of one of these um, workshops that we, we uh, present would be Cano Lab 3D. Is there anybody that's been to Cano Lab? And so uh, if you haven't been, which it looks like you haven't, I would strongly urge you to go. Um, it's kind of uh, unique in the sense that it takes, um, we, we take canola plants and we produce them in greenhouses and um, in potted situations and actually inoculate and affect them with different diseases and different deficiencies, um, different insects. And then we come together in the middle of winter with, uh, with producers and agronomists and industry and kind of uh, have an interactive session going around uh, and diagnosing what's wrong with individual plants and, and uh, what can be done to, to mitigate the problems ahead of the season. So as opposed to being reactive in season, you know, you, you see uh, your canola starting to turn purple and you wonder why, you go to Cano Lab and there's a good chance uh, you, can, you can identify it sooner and mitigate it sooner. Um, Rick wanted me to mention that registration opens on December 16th uh, at 8 a.m. and there's a good chance it'll be sold out by noon. So uh, if you're going to go, I, uh, you kind of have to be on the ball and I, I, as I can't stress enough, I strongly recommend you do. Uh, another uh, workshop um, that we put together is, is this leading edge farm management workshop with everybody's favorite tax planner, uh, Merle Good. And uh, we're holding one here in Lethbridge on March 11th. And, I, and again, if you're interested, check out the website and registration should open in January sometime. So kind of a relatively new area for ACPC uh, in terms of the grand scheme of things is government and industry affairs. As I mentioned before, CCGA has kind of spearheaded the whole um, policy side of things as, as far as canola production and canola marketing and lobbying goes in Canada. But uh, recently ACPC, we decided that there was opportunity for us to get involved at more of a provincial level. And so um, our general manager, Wartoma, hired Carla Bergstrom to focus on uh, to focus on government industry affairs, and Carla's got a, a vast background in um, um, within industry and within government, and, and and really a wealth of knowledge. And she has a ton of different files that she's working on. Maybe one that I'll touch on that's kind of gained a little bit of publicity lately is this variety registration system. So. Um, Federal Minister of Agriculture Jerry Ritz kind of came out last year and challenged the recommending committees and the registration process across spectrum to come up with uh, a more of a streamlined approach to getting varieties to, to market sooner. And um, in in the case of canola, they've been pretty pretty efficient um, to date. And so this is this is just kind of uh, um, help streamline streamline that process even more. So that kind of wraps up last year in terms of the, the financials and, and, um, and, and some of the programs you can look forward to in the next fiscal year. In terms of the ACPGC budget, our, our, our beginning of our year was August 1st and we're looking at running a budget very much similar to last year, um, five and a half million. Obviously there was more canola produced in Alberta, so that will contribute to a higher budget, um, but that those grants that I talked about from the federal government probably won't, or won't be available, and so um, uh, the, the difference between the two kind of comes out as a wash, and uh, anticipating a budget of about $5.5 million, 
likely that it could be higher than that, uh, given that they might find more canola in Alberta. But uh, I'm sure you guys are just as honest with StatsCan as I am, so maybe that's not the case. Uh, so in terms of the expenses on the budget, again, uh, very similar to last year. Most of it's going into research, market development, GRE, and, and CCC contribution. And again, hoping to run a deficit of about $500,000 to put some of that money that's sitting in the bank to work, as opposed to just having it sit there. So again, just kind of a visual breakdown of uh, how things are going to look, uh, or how the ACPC budget looks for this, this fiscal year that we're in. A couple numbers that might look a little different to you are the CCC contribution, which kind of dips below 20%, and that has to do with the fact that we actually pay our CCC contribution on a one-year lag. So the, the levy collected from last year's crop, which was, which was subsequently smaller than this year's crop, will actually be contributed to this year's um, budget. So at the same time next year, this being a big crop this year will we'll, uh, roll over into next year. And so it kind of all works out in the end. The other thing that kind of pops off is the corporate and min side uh, jumping up to about 12%. And that has to do with the, the fact that we're planning on hiring a communications coordinator. Um, and so that's someone that can actually um, put that in, put all this information out to growers and to industry and uh, leave our, our uh, brain trust uh, like Rick Talu and, and Simone Demirs Collins and Carla Bergstrom time to concentrate on, on actually on the project, on the projects as opposed to actually creating the content itself. So, um, so it's just a, a process of growing with the industry. So at the same time, board of directors fees are lower. So we're still managing to keep that 85-15% uh, uh, blend. So there's lots of opportunity to stay connected with ACPC. Uh, you can go to our website and sign up for our free newsletter. Lots of content on YouTube. Uh, I'm sure many of you are on Twitter, and uh, ACPC actually has several platforms that they operate on. Um, you can find uh, podcasts on iTunes, uh, as well as uh, lots of fun stuff on Facebook. So I'll just remind you about our, uh, our AGM. Uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's annually held in Edmonton during Farm Tech. Uh, and, and this year we're gonna be holding it on the afternoon of the Tuesday, the January the 28th. And uh, so even if you aren't registered for Farm Tech, you can still, you're still free to attend this, this AGM. Um, but like I say, if you're gonna be there anyways, I, I strongly urge you to take Farm Tech in as well. Uh, and just kind of on that, along those same lines, if there's any resolutions that, want, that uh, growers want to bring forward uh, to the AGM, they have to be presented to the office 10 days ahead of uh, the AGM just so we can properly format them and gain some background. And if there's anybody that has anything that they want to bring forward or, or wants help writing up a resolution, I'd be more than happy to help you with that. Um, you can either talk to me today, I'll be here all day, or uh, you can find my information on the ACPC website. And that's about all I've got for you. So thanks again for braving the weather and uh, very appreciative for you guys to take in uh, this session and even more so for this Farming Smarter Conference. It's an excellent opportunity to, uh, to talk to, to growers from around Southern Alberta and, and uh, across the prairies. And uh, I know we're gonna be, we're gonna be treated to uh, lots of good content today. So if there's any questions. All right, well, thank you for your time.